So, hello to everyone. I'm Dan Ljubicic, and welcome to building a layout worth $50 million with CSS Grid presentation. Uh, this is our third day here, which basically means third hangover <laughs> in our <laughs> world. So, I'll do my best to keep this as simple and interesting and as possible, and to keep you guys awake. So, I'll start with a short introduction about self. Uh, former bookstore manager with a se seven years of experience. At one point decided to switch a career, moved to uh, web development, started as a classic uh, front-end development uh, developer, and currently working for a, a full-service web agency, uh, Juma Team, and at our uh, Zagreb office. And now, uh, what I'm not, I'm not a CSS grid expert <laughs> and a presenter. <laughs> uh, so you are my, my first uh, audience. Uh, so I will remember your beautiful faces for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, so you may wonder, how did I end up here, speaking in front of you? So. It looks like a little bit like this. So oh. if I had to write it down, it will be this kind of thing. Uh, but actually, uh, it's even simpler than that. Uh, my boss has crazy ideas to send me here. Uh, and CSS Grid is actually new to everyone. So it's something new, kind of new that's happening. So. I find sharing any knowledge about it very useful and, and this is something that we should support. I uh, also like to reser research and experiment with the new technologies and to share knowledge as well. So this is, I would say, the right answer. Uh, before we start with the main thing, uh, I thought it could be useful to just go quickly through kind of a history of layouting and sharing my struggle with it. So the first thing, table. Uh, senior developers would probably immediately know what this means. And I like to hear those stories, how <laughs> things were done in the days. Uh, so one of them was use of a table uh, in HTML to build a full uh, page layout. And it was kind of a really, I was very curious how did that happen, which so now looks... We exported it from Photoshop, <laughs> directly. <laughs> yeah. uh, but actually, when, when we look at the normal uh, table uh, <coughs> uh, uh, layout, construction, uh, it's kind of very natural to go from this to, mm -hmm. to that. So this is like a normal table, and to just imagine and transform it to be, instead of table header to be a page header and so on. <coughs> but this led to nesting hell, having a who know how many tables nested within each other, which leads to maintenance difficulties. And of course with uh, responsive needs for our websites, uh, tables for not a way to, to do it. Uh, Next thing, inline block. I remember when I, for the first time, wanted to do a simple navigation, I, I used inline block, and instead of having this, I got this, and I thought that I did something wrong, that I'm missing something, uh, it wasn't that. Then I thought it's a kind of a bug, and it's not a bug, it's actually a feature. <laughs> like we say. <laughs> so uh, uh, what happens here is actually that uh, inline block elements behave in the same way like uh, words in one uh, row behave. So you usually want to have a gap between the, between the words. So then I started to research how to fight that gap and I ran into a one great article on CSS tricks with a few examples how to beat, how to fight that gap. And they all looked 
crazy to me, but actually all of them are doing the same thing, removing that empty space like between the words, in this case with, with, between the uh, blocks. So a couple of approaches. Uh, I like this one, just comment out everything. Uh, or this Zen approach, you just remove the closing tags and that's that. Uh, for my case, I used the CSS solution, uh, which was kind of the easiest one, and I don't have to mess with the HTML tags and all that. So, uh, but of course, with that one, you have to uh, know uh, the, the font size used in the element, and on that basis, you calculate your um, uh, negative margin. Uh, at the end of this article, uh, they uh, recommended just use uh, float instead, so I went into floats. And yeah, it immediately solves the problem, everything is fine, but with the floats, pretty much soon, uh, things for me started to overlap and I was confused what's going on now. And I was looked like this <laughs> after a five minutes working with the float. Um, I mean, with the, with the use of float and uh, positioning, uh, we can achieve a lot, and we did, uh, but the limitations are hard to ignore, and it's not that it's something wrong with the float uh, property, it's just it was meant to do something else, it was meant to do this. So, to have a simple image or whatever on one side and to put a text around it and it works perfectly. And uh, then when I tried, when things went more and more con confusing for me, why don't we have a proper property in CSS to deal with components or element layouts? Uh, Flexbox, Fle Flexbox happened, and in Flexbox really look, uh, works, works uh, great. Uh, with, with him, with, with, with use of Flexbox, we have full control over uh, columns or rows. It's responsive, out of the box, uh, easy to learn in, and use, and manipulation of layout elements became much <coughs> easier, a natural thing, thing to do with it. Equals to my life became a lot healthier. Uh, so, if you want to align three elements in one row, I would say that Flexbox is the most easiest and natural way to do it. Uh, but if we have, when our designer in the team creates something like that, so no problem with it, but he imagined this to look like this on mobile. So for instance, here is our login on desktop, it's gonna, look, it's gonna be positioned here but on mobile, we want it to be here, and this thing goes there, so we have a lot of <coughs> movings going on here, which is kind of a point when we start to scratch our heads and be very angry at that uh, designer. <laughs> um, so this is the moment when CSS Grid helps. And the first thing that the first gr uh, CSS grid uh, within of fle with flexbo Flexbox is that Flexbox always works in one dimension. You have always a full control over the, over the elements when it comes to columns or rows, while CSS grid works perfectly uh, at the same time on uh, two directions or dimensions. Uh, so this is a fact, the only CSS uh, grid, display grid property, is the only CSS property for grid creation and full control layouting, to make it things simple. Uh, so the first question will be, do we still need Flexbox? Uh, we do. This is not uh, a versus situation. They they, they meant to do different things, and they work uh, well together. So you can always put a flexbox 
item within the flex item within the grid and vice versa and maybe a good starting point is when you, when you're choosing which one to use is just to see if it's about a full page element or you are dealing with a component uh, and then if it's uh, for instance an element you just observe it and decide and to see if it's uh, one dimensional or two dimensional so for instance if you are ha just want to have uh, three boxes in one line then it's a job for a flex box or if you are d dealing with a full page layout it could be a good starting point to use uh, with, with, a, with a grid so CSS grid first steps mm. I did the usual read a couple of articles on Smashing Magazine, CSS tricks they are all great I did a couple of uh, YouTube videos, tutorials but actually I learned the most about grid from this guy uh, this is uh, Piet Mondrian, Dutch painter, well known for his uh, abstract uh, works and according to many designers, a father of uh, layout design and also he's very famous for his uh, short and simple uh, quotes <coughs> like this one and very complicated uh, paintings like that one <laughs> so <coughs> this is going to be our task for me, it was great exercise and introduction to grid. Uh, this is his work from uh, 1929, composition number three with uh, red, yellow, uh, black, and blue. Uh, and we're gonna start with it. So let's make some art. Uh, before we paint, we need our canvas. So hope you guys see it. Uh, so we are going to create normal div with a class of canvas, style it in CSS. I'm using the width and height to be the same, to, to keep the same proportions at, as the original image, and our canvas is for now is going to be white. Next thing is now we can follow uh, here new new properties that I'm going to use. So the first thing is display grid and now our canvas is a grid element but we don't have yet our grid within it and we are going to for that we're gonna start with the use of grid template columns and by putting here inside I'm gonna now explain what does this actually does so I used repeat uh, function, it's a part of CSS grid. Uh, so instead of writing, I want to achieve, I want to have here 20 columns. So instead of writing here 20 times one or uh, one fraction, one <coughs> fraction, one fraction, one fraction, I used the repeat uh, to accomplish that. So it basically does, it repeats 20 times column, it creates uh, 20 columns with the width of one fraction and one fraction is also a new thing it basically does, it, it sets the width of uh, one fraction of, of a whole uh, uh, grid element uh, you can also use the decimal numbers for it and I did, for <coughs> we'll find out later why so in this case we are having 21 column, 20 same size and 21st is half size of, of the rest of ones. We're going to do that the same with the rows and the same thing but we are for the rows we're going to use only 20 of them. So what happened? It looks like nothing but if we do the inspect element we're going to see this. So now we are having our grid based 21, 20. So <coughs> Mondrian uh, used his uh, he used eight fields uh, within his painting, and we are going to do the same. So let's HTML them. They are here now. 
and now we are continuing uh, with the creation of of of, actual, of of the fields. So let's start with the red one. Now, now we are dealing with a, a grid element, so it's a field one, and now we are starting with the positioning of those elements within the full full grid. So we are, we are using grid column start, and we are cou counting from the first line. So we are not counting the boxes, but the lines. So the first one is our first, and it will <coughs> end on tenth. And if we see it on the front, we have this. So we are going to do the similar thing with the rows. Starts again from the first first line, not the box, and goes and it ends on twelfth. So on the front, now we have our first field, board seven million. Uh, <laughs> uh, we continue with the second, second one. Uh, now we continue. Uh, now we, we we start with the uh, where the first one ended, so it's on tenth, and uh, we are moving to to the last one, which is. 22nd. And with the rows, uh, the same. Uh, so it's now kind of difficult to know what we did because everything is white. Our white field is on white background and I think it's a good time to, to do those borders. And we could do that by uh, using the normal uh, border, border uh, property in CSS, but we are going to use something uh, that grid provides as well, and that is uh, uh -huh. the first thing goes. Uh, we're gonna uh, set up the um, the background for uh, of black to just to, to to see the difference. Now our background, full background, is black, and on top of it, two fields. So the next thing will be the grid gap. So when that grid uh, gap actually does gap <laughs> between the elements. And in this case, it that, does that uh, black, black border, which is actually the full background of the of the of our canvas. And on the when you inspect it, it <coughs> looks like this. And from now on, uh, again, yeah, we can see our boxes. But now we are not going going to count the lines. We are counting the gaps. Although, again, we are always starting to. It's always a first line that is going to be gap, gap, gap. Uh, so the third one is our black one. And now we are going to use this shortened version where we are setting our grid column uh, to start at, at, at first. And it spans nine gaps. So it will it will go uh, 9 on the right and with the rows it starts on, on 12th and spans 9 which is the end. For the fourth one uh, similar thing it's our white one fifth one it's going to be it's the red one uh, in this case we don't actually don't need to tell him count the, the, the span amount because it's already on the end it's only one only one gap uh, continue with the black one now comes the blue one uh, with the blue one <coughs> blue one uh, in original painting uh, Modrian used a little bit uh, thicker border and in this, this case I'm gonna use the normal border bottom to, to accomplish that. Eighth one is our last one. So we are almost there. And now if we inspect our element, we can see that Modrian actually broke his grid into two places. He moved a little bit his blue, blue, blue field uh, down. down and the uh, uh, yellow one is a little bit uh, wider and we can 
hack that and fix that, but I think it <coughs> could be a kind of uh, unpolite toward Modrian to, to, to do that. But Modrian as well put his sing signature here, which we cannot see, but I think it would be fair enough that we do the same. So in the HTML, I wrote here job and our signature is here now. So that, that's that. And we have our painting, it's not perfect. It's not worth that much, but I think that we achieved a lot. And I uh, hope that you can see uh, that you can imagine this is a full page layout and how it would be easier to transform all the elements within the page and basically with the media use we can transpile it what whatever you want, how, however we want it. So for final notes, uh, I know it's kind of uh, difficult to change our old habit, habits or how do we do certain things and we always looking for excuses yeah but it's like that blah 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 so the ex excuse for a long time was uh, uh, browser uh, support this <coughs> is not anymore an issue you can use uh, CSS grid freely on some browsers you know who, which ones uh, there are some issues so uh, but all uh, but again it's all, uh, all already the provi provided solutions to, to be that uh, when it comes to resources uh, as I previously mentions, mentioned there are uh, uh, really a lot of them they're all good uh, good articles out mm -hmm. there but in, if I have to choose one uh, for the starting point it would be defi definitely be to visit a grid by example uh, web page. It's done by Rachel Andrew. Uh, she writes also great articles about the grid. The page is full of uh, great examples, and it's uh, <coughs> really uh, recommended. Uh, the one that I really recommend. Uh, also, I'm open to, to to discussions, to to share knowledge. You can write me on this email. And if you liked this presentation, probably you would like to work with us. <laughs> so you can visit our <coughs> web page, get in touch with us, and that's, that's pretty much that. Uh, thank you. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs> Ho hopefully this was a little bit interesting for you. Questions, maybe? No, no, no questions. Okay. Thank you for no questions. <laughs> <laughs>